Welcome to Cleetwood Cove at Crater Lake National Park in Oregon. Um, I was really excited to come to this stop because there's a fascinating geologic story here uh, which doesn't even involve the lake down there. Instead, uh, it involves this outcrop on the other side of the lake. And I'm excited to share this story with you, but I'll try to restrain myself and let's, let's look through some of the evidence together and then let's see if we can piece this together uh, as best we can. So let's start down here on the opposite side of the road. We can see there's some white deposits uh, cropping out in the road cut here along the rim drive. Worked out kind of perfectly to do this because they're actually doing construction. And so um, I don't have to worry about cars zipping on by. So if we look at this white deposit first, which seems to be sitting on top of everything else. It is made out of chunks of rock that are sort of poorly glued together. Um, but each one of these is a piece of pumice, very light and frothy, white, lots of holes in it. And so this is the deposit of pumice from the big cataclysmic eruption that formed Crater Lake 7,700 years ago, the collapse of Mount Mazama. This pumice would have all been raining down out of the sky at the time of the eruption and the time uh, the caldera was forming. So this is one clue to our puzzle, is uh, the white pumice, the um, pumice fall deposits, if you will, that was falling out of the sky. So there's our first little bit of information. And then let's head back over here so we can see the outcrop of the pumice here. Some random rock there, we'll ignore that, assume that that's out of place. But then what's really interesting, and we can see some of the white pumice still up here by the tree line is now down at road level, we've got this orange deposit. And as we look at this, it's made out, it's better glued together, but it looks really similar to what we just saw, except now the same pumice we looked at is this orange, almost red color. But it's the same material. In fact, we can see it connecting from here to there. So what was going on here? What was happening? Um, and then our next piece of the puzzle is that this orange pumice is sitting on top of or draped over this reddish uh, rhyodacite. This is a volcanic rock. This was a lava flow. And in fact, you can see the layering of this draping up over that, which suggests that as the pumice fell out of the sky, uh, it was covering this small outcrop here. And then you can see some uh, small fluctuations in the pumice beds based on the topography at the time. So interesting clues there. We've got the, the white pumice um, that fell out of the sky, but then over here it changes color. It's more uh, well cemented, held together much better, and sitting on top of this reddish outcrop of rhyodacite. So let's go down the road for one more little piece of data. And actually, let's let's zoom over here towards the lakeside and look at the rocks that crop out here. So now we're starting to see rocks that are um black glassy um i mean you could call them an obsidian but it's still um more or less the same composition the, the rhyodacite notice too the orientation that if you can see the the lines in here that aren't just on the surface but go through the rock itself they're oriented vertically or near vertically here's a nice one over here that shows uh, some of the that might be good in the shadows there. Here we go. Some of the orientation of the lines there 
going up and down. So this was all part of a lava flow here. And the age of this unit is the same as the big climactic eruption 7,700 years ago. But we can see this forms almost like a rib. It's almost like the lava flow is oriented vertically here, which is kind of odd. And then a little bit more head scratching. Then if we come back across the road, we can see some of the same things we've seen. The white pumice up above, grading downward into the orange and red pumice deposits, and then sitting right on top of this red, shiny, somewhat glassy rhyodacite, uh, this lava. And if we come up here, we can actually see uh, the contact with the pumice particles here, and then the rhyolite or the rhyodacite, the lava just below it here. Um, so nice contact. So this is really just draped over the top of this. And so the big story here, and I did not piece this together. I just, uh, smarter people, people than me did, but it's a fascinating story and one I wanted to see with my own eyes. But we can see this outcrop, the rhyodacite, the lava, thick pasty lava extending off in that direction. And so, I'm gonna look just a little bit further and then we'll probably walk back and piece it all together. Any sort of interesting views over here, looking down. But at the head of the cove, you can see these big craggy outcrops blocks, jumbled blocks kind of coming down. On the other side, in the shadows there, probably a little hard to see, it looks like if that's the same unit, it's more or less intact. And there is some crude horizontal layering to it. Again, a little hard to see with the sun angle and uh, the visibility. But here's the story. I think I've kept you in suspense long enough. Um, so, the big eruption of Mount Mazama takes place. Um, it's pushing ash, pumice up into the sky. At some point, um, the eruption has emptied so much of the magma in the underlying chamber that it starts to collapse in on itself. But here's the cool part. You knew that part already. This lava had already erupted at the time of the caldera collapse. So while the eruption was taking place on this side of Mount Mazama, there was a rhyodacite lava flow that was still molten in its interior at least. And then when the whole caldera collapsed to form the lake, that rhyodacite lava flow was beheaded. Basically, part of it collapsed. A whole section of that lava flow collapsed along with the rest of the caldera into the lake. And so the, that left some exposed portions of the lava, right? So now you've got um, a decapitated, thick, silica-rich lava flow that now is exposed. Now there's a big hole in the ground where once there was a mountain. And as that pumice is falling out of the sky, it's falling onto uh, molten lava, silica-rich molten lava. And the heat of the lava and the gases too, to some degree, um, oxidize the pumice sitting just above it there. So the orange color of the pumice that we scratched our heads about back here at the first spot is a result of this pumice falling onto a molten silica rich lava and the heat from that lava oxidizing it, um, actually welding it together a little better than it might have been otherwise. Um, and then that whole lava flow then that had been decapitated when the caldera collapsed, that all starts to pour back down into the caldera. And so these steep angles, we can see the orientation of these textures here in the lava flow 
is the lava flow oozing back down into this newly formed caldera. And this is what's forming this section of Cleetwood Cove here. All these jumbled blocks are this lava oozing back down into the caldera, literally within minutes or hours, I suppose, of the whole caldera forming, which is just, I think that's just a fantastic story. And I hope I've conveyed it and explained it well enough. And so uh, again, just quick summary, the white pumice, which we see all around this part of uh, the, the lake in this area, because that was all falling out of the sky um, through all around Mount Mazama. But here it takes on a different color, this reddish color. Here's where we can actually see it sitting directly on top of the lava flow. And so it was this lava flow, the, the evidence then is this lava flow had to still be molten in order to get this color uh, that we see just here at this part of Cleetwood Cove. And then the other bit of evidence that suggests this was still molten are those steep orientations we saw of that glassy Rio Day site where it flowed back down into uh, the caldera just after it formed. So uh, this was part of the story I didn't know about until I read about it uh, in a couple publications. So a uh, really fascinating twist to the story and maybe something most people don't know that there was actually already a lava flow um, erupted, molten, at the time the caldera collapsed here at Crater Lake. So hopefully you enjoyed this little, um, this little adventure with me. Thanks for joining me. Again, geology professor Sean Wilsey. Um, appreciate you like sharing, subscribing, promoting the geology education that I try to share with the public and donate options. Uh, the thanks button at the bottom right of the viewer. There's also um, the banner of my homepage. And under the video description is a PayPal link. So thanks again for joining me on this little geologic education journey from a somewhat smoky uh, but still magnificent Crater Lake National Park.